Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you have had a good weekend. Some rest. Got some rest. Okay, you all don't look like you get enough rest anyway. So let's just pray, and uh, we'll uh, learn more in the subject of prayer and intercession. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for adding another day and a wonderful week into our lives. Lord, we pray for your strength, O oh God. And uh, Lord, we just pray, God, that as we are learning about prayer, that Father, you would, uh, Lord, stir us up, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. And God, that each one of us, Lord, uh, Lord, we, we will truly be, Lord, those prayer warriors who will uh, receive from heaven and Father God, uh, uh, who will declare, decree and Father, see your blessings, Father, being poured out uh, upon us and people around us. So, so Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity and the privilege uh, of learning regarding the subject of prayer. We bless and honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we've uh, looked at many different... It's prayer that we've discussed, but we've also seen differing aspects about prayer. So starting with simple prayer, we saw how one can pray, how one can bring an earnest petition before the Lord. And in the last class, we also discussed about something known as travail, which is a more intense form of prayer. And beyond this, beyond like beyond personal prayer, there comes a ministry of prayer. So uh, travail can also be a part of that ministry of prayer. But we said that one can serve others through the ministry of prayer. And we looked at the example of one man from the city of Colosse. What was his name? From the city of Colosse, last class. Okay, who's going to tell me the name? If, if yes. Epaphras. Yes, that's right. Epaphras. So this individual, um, he prayed with much zeal. And Paul gives him the same honor that he would give an apostle, um, you know, or any other minister of God. So telling us that the ministry of prayer is highly regarded. Now, let us learn more about praying for others. Praying for others also includes praying for our own family. So how should we pray for our family? We'll look at that in today's session. So this is chapter 14 in our notes, where we'll learn about the influence one can have over their own families. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 to 16, we read that uh, even in the situation when one spouse is a believer and one spouse is an unbeliever, the believer can still exercise spiritual influence. Okay? So... Uh, that's what this passage talks about. So the focus is spiritual influence that a believer carries over their family. That's the focus. So with that in mind, let's quickly read what is given here in our notes. It's in the message version. So can one of us please read it out fully? Anyone with the mic? And if you are married, stay married. This is the master's command, not mine. If a wife should leave her husband, she must either remain single or else come back and make things right with him. And a husband has no right to get right of his wife. For the rest of you who are in mixed marriages, Christian marriage, married to non-Christian, we have no explicit command from the master so this is what you must do if you are a man with a wife who is not a believer 
but who still wants to live with you hold on to her if you are a woman with a husband who is not a believer but he wants to live with you hold on to him the unbelieving husband share shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband otherwise your children would be left out as it is they also are included in the spiritual purposes of god on the other hand if the unbelieving spouse walks out if you have got to left let him or her go you don't have to hold on dis disrespectfully god has called us to make the best of it as peaceful as we can you never know wife the way you handle this might bring your husband not only back to you but to god you never know husband the way you handle the might bring your wife not only back to you but to god okay thank you avanilla uh, for reading that long passage so this is this is we are reading it in the message version uh, just to to understand right in simple terms what paul was writing about so if we can look at verse 14 look at verse 14 there it says the unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife holiness of wife as in believing wife right believing wife then and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband so holiness of husband meaning believing husband otherwise your children would be left out as it is they also are inclined in the spiritual purposes of god so children are included in the spiritual purposes of god so this is what we want to understand now when we talk about the family we we call it god's government okay god's government what god does is he establishes a a structure so in god's government of family god has the husband wife the children okay and in other passages we will read that the husband is the head of the wife so there is a way in which authority flows in the family and there is a way in which the spiritual influences are uh, set up in the home this is how god has created it that's why here what are we reading the unbelieving even if the husband is an unbelieving husband of a believing wife there is an influence okay god has god establishes that influence similarly if the children you know are um, okay so even the children right in such a marriage where one of the spouse is not a believer even they are not left out there is an influence so the point is we recognize that there is a system of god of spiritual influence spiritual authority in the household in the family which we must respect which we must honor and which we are now trying to understand in order to pray effectively for the family so now that we have understood god has given us spiritual influence when we pray for our close knit family members god's power can be released through our praying okay so this is what is necessary for us to um study further we'll see specific prayers which can be prayed you know the husband can pray for the wife the wife can pray for the husband so on and so forth but before we do that we just established that it is powerful when we pray for our own family members because god has already given us spiritual influences 
inside the house inside the family so can outsiders pray answer is yes outsiders can also pray but because there is a special spiritual influence the prayers of let's say parents for their children is very effective the prayers of husbands for their wives very effective the prayers of the wives for the husbands very effective so there's there is a special dynamics that goes on within the family structure and that's why we must pray for our family okay so that is the understanding which we wanted to establish and on, on a side note even though paul is talking about this context of an unbeliever being married to a believer so what happened those days in the corinthian churches that uh, you know there were people who were coming to know christ okay so maybe one of one of uh, the couple got saved so now what happened now that one person got saved they are in a marriage that is unequally yoked uh, unequally yoked the spouse is an unbeliever so paul is addressing that kind of a context and says now that you are a believer you don't have to leave so if the unbeliever is willing to stay with you you stay on in the marriage so this is not to say that yeah if you want to find an unbeliever as a spouse you can so the bible very clearly says that if one is a believer then we must not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever okay it's quite clear about that matter so uh, i hope that question doesn't come because we are discussing from this passage It's only uh, believers are to be married to believers that's the way god teaches us in his word okay so now that we've understood about um, a spiritual influence what are the what are all the prayers that we must pray for our family members we can pray that you know god will give them wisdom we can pray that god will protect them we can pray for um, their present times as well as their future times we can pray for god's purpose to be uh, fulfilled in in our family members life you know so on and so forth so there are many areas that you and i can cover and when we pray there'll be a a powerful uh, manifestation of god's power uh, through our prayers any any questions so far okay so if there aren't then we'll just go on so praying for the spouse the key here is to as to base all our prayers on scripture so the more we refer to scripture uh the more powerful our prayers are it's not like okay if we just pray a prayer which is not scripture god won't it there's nothing like that but we know that the word of god carries the authority of god and that's why when we pray through scripture so for the family when we pray we pray through scripture and it makes it all the more powerful so we're going to look at a couple of points which we can pray for each family member but also we see scriptures that are associated right with that point so praying for a spouse so in this case um, you know it's it's like a general thing um, we are discussing as a man would pray for his his uh, wife but it can also be the other way around where a wife is praying for the husband so let's see there are four points that are covered one is um the wife or husband they can pray for the spiritual growth okay spiritual growth of the other person so there are some scriptures that we are going to look at we will take turns to read these passages because they are very powerful passages so first ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 21 one of us please pick that up then ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21 another person can read that and online students please read colossians 1 verses 9 to 11 therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints 
do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my praise mm -hmm. that the god of lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him mm -hmm. the eyes yes. of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeded greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which is uh, which he worked in uh, Christ when he raised him from the death and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all the principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in in this age but also is that which is to come okay thank you so can you see that so there is a prayer of paul for the ephesian church where he is praying and he is asking that god will give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation for what the knowledge of him meaning the knowledge of who god is so for us to know god we need the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding so we're just taking this prayer and praying for in this case a spouse paul prayed this for the ephesian believers but we can pray it for the spouse and say god give them the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding so that you know they will have the knowledge of you let them know you more and more what is spiritual growth what is spiritual maturity to know god more isn't it so in that way we are asking uh, for for god to work in their hearts and for them to know god more and to know many other things about god so here you know he writes uh, different things he says the eyes of their understanding be enlightened so that means um there is more revelation they receive more insight they understand more truth about god and his kingdom so this is what we are praying even for the person you know like uh, your spouse you're praying for your spouse and other things about let them know the power of god the kind of power that raised christ from the dead you know resurrection power of christ let them know that oh god so we are praying that our spouse may become spiritually mature and there may be growth okay in their spiritual journey so this could be or this should be the first prayer that you know one can pray for their spouse so pray for spiritual growth spiritual maturity understanding wisdom to know god now let's read the second passage who's going to read for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named mm. that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with mighty through his spirit in the inner man yes that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comp comprehend it with all the saints that all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height Mm. to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god yes. now to him who is able to do extremely extremely abundantly to above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by christ jesus to all generation forever and ever amen okay thank you so this is the prayer of paul for the ephesian church also but it's like another um added dimension so apart from what we said about knowing god in a deeper way he he prays and he says god strengthen them with might through his spirit in the inner man so we are praying for the spiritual man or the spirit of the of the spouse and we are saying god you strengthen them because that is the spiritual part of who they are let them be strengthened let them be rooted and grounded in love 
and let them have an understanding of God's uh, vastness of the love of God. See, it says about God's love in verse 18, let them be able to comprehend. Comprehend means understand. Understand with all the saints, the width, the length, the depth. Okay, the dimensions of God's love. How big God's love is. How high God's love is. Okay, or um, all the dimensions of God's love. But we all know that we can't, we don't have a limited measure. You know, we can't say, okay, the height of God's love is uh, five meters and the width of God's love is five meters. We can't because it seems, it, it is um, infinite. There are There is no end to it. So then how do we even understand it? It's not a natural understanding that you and I can have about about the love of God, because the love of God is so vast, so deep, so great, so wonderful. But we are praying, you know, God, please help them to understand how much, how much, how vast, how great your love is. So that's a powerful prayer also for the spouse that we are praying that they may understand God's love, that may be that they may be committed to God's love, that may be rooted and grounded in God's love, and that um, you know God's power also may work in them. So these are many different points, but how we can pray this is just open that passage. Maybe one day we pray from Ephesians uh, chapter 1, and one day we pray from Ephesians chapter 3, or you know, we write down points from each one of these passages, we declare it over the spouse, and we pray it out. So that's the way we need to pray through each of the each of the prayer points. Now, what is the last passage? Um, online, yes, online batch. Colossians chapter one, yeah. verse nine. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't quite see who read it. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you so much for reading it out. And as we look at these two verses, again, we are praying, we are asking that God, let them be filled with the knowledge of God's will. So let them not be searching, you know, what is God's will, what is God's will, but give them a clear understanding of your will so that they can live for the purposes of God. Um, and it also says, let them live a life which is worthy of the Lord, worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, okay, and fruitful in every good work. So these, these are all powerful prayers. We can even pray it for ourselves, but we can pray it for our loved ones as well. So just make a note of these passages uh, and take time to meditate on it. I'm sure, you know, it, it will uh, really strengthen us and um, help us be a blessing to others as we pray for them. So in this way, write out scriptures. Now we'll keep going to uh, another category later. We'll talk about praying for children. But even there, when we pray for the spiritual growth of children, we can use the same passages. OK, so uh, that's how we're going to do it. Now, maybe the second prayer point which we want to pray for is the um, that they, the spouse may live for God's purpose, that they will understand God's gifts, they will understand God's calling, that they will, they will walk in God's calling, that they will walk in God's anointing, uh, and that they will fulfill the purpose that God has for them. Okay, so this is how we can also pray. And uh, why are we praying like this? Why should we pray like this? Because it's a partner 
Okay. Yeah. So, see, as much as we desire that we will fulfill God's purpose, everyone has a purpose of God. So, even, uh, you know, the spouse has God's purpose. And the way God works is that when we are full, when they are fulfilling God's purpose, it's part of our life and our life purpose as well. So, God calls both together to fulfill their life purposes. So it's not just about, oh, just me, I'll fulfill God's purpose. I don't care about, you know, the other, uh, the spouse, whether they are fulfilling or not, but it's all connected. And so uh, as much as we pray for ourselves, we also pray for our spouse and we say, God, you know, you help them also fulfill their purpose. It's not just about helping them, helping me fulfill God's purpose. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes it may be looked at that way. But even they have a purpose and they too should be able to fulfill their purpose for God. So that's why we are praying that God will help them and uh, they can also fulfill God's purpose. Okay, next. Uh, we can start to declare scriptures. Okay, Declaration of scriptures uh, for, uh, you know, like a husband that are a couple of scriptures that are listed here from the book of uh, Proverbs and Psalms, things like, uh, you know, Proverbs 14.1, a wise woman builds up her home. So we, declaration means you just speak it on, uh, with that person in mind. So a husband may pray something like this. He may say, my wife is a wise woman who builds up the home. So it's a declaration. It's not even a prayer. It's a, there is a difference. What is a prayer? God, please make my wife someone who will build up. That is a prayer. But declaration is you just, you know, sort of go by the word of God and you speak it forth. So that is a declaration. So we can pick up many such scriptures. We can talk about how, um, you know, maybe a husband can say, my wife is a prudent woman. Uh, she is my pride and joy. All this is scripture. She is a fruitful wine in the home, bringing blessing, protection to my family. Uh, Psalm 128 verse 3. And so, you know, you pull out different scriptures and declare it. Same way, you know, a, a wife can also uh, declare uh, and say that, you know, my husband is a man who fears the Lord. My husband is uh, is uh, is honored in the city gates. You know, he's a wise man. So you can declare from scripture. And as we declare, we know the power of declaration, right? Whatever life and death is in the power of our tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. So as we make these declarations, you remember we started today by saying that we have spiritual influence. And so we are releasing that influence. We are releasing that authority over the individual's life. Yes, Prem, you have a question? Uh, meaning, I didn't get it. Yes, you can take. Uh, like declare like it's written here declare that your wife is a wise woman mm. and uh, she builds your home and she is like a fruitful mind yes so uh, like if i'm saying to my wife that she you are a fruitful mind mm. and you build my home and you are a wise woman so uh, it it is also that we are admiring her yeah, so see the difference is uh, if we are speaking it to the person, it's more of an affirmation. Okay, that's where admiration, you know, adoration, all that comes in. Affirmation, all that comes in. But we are talking about declaration. Declaration means agreeing with God's word as settled. Okay, now let me just give an example. Mm. Let's look at Psalm 
All right. So verse three of Psalm 128, uh, or let's let's take Psalm 128 verse two. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. That is a verse. Okay. This verse is about our work. It, it says, it's God's promise. God says, when you work hard and you labor with your hands, you shall be happy. Fine. Now, imagine. I am working and I'm not seeing any fruit. So then... The scripture seems like it's not yet fulfilled in my life. But declaration means I have already agreed with the scripture. And I am making a declaration like it's not necessarily to a person. It's I am declaring my faith. So I can just be speaking it off. Right? Uh, God hears it. The demonic powers hear it. I hear it. Maybe even people are hearing it. It's my declaration of faith. I'm not speaking it to anybody. You got it? Because what you were saying is speaking it to a person. That's different. It's not about speaking to that person. It's about declaring what I believe. So in prayer, what I'm doing is I believe this. I work hard and I'm happy. It goes well with me. But maybe the current situation is that it's not happening. But this is my declaration. I work hard. I will be happy. It will go well with me. So I keep making the faith declaration till I see it manifest. Now, coming back to our uh, you know, declarations about the spouse. So what if the wife is not a wise woman? But for us as believers, faith declaration must always be aligned to God's word. So I still declare my wife is a wise woman. Maybe in practice right now, there are things happening which tell you that, no, 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 those are not wise choices. So you understand, right? We are not talking to the person as an appreciation or anything. No, I believe God's word. So I am speaking God's word. That is a declaration. Okay. So yeah? it's like in our personal prayer. Yes. We yes. are talking to God. Correct. And we are declaring over her. Yes. Like exactly. Yeah. And if we are uh, praying in uh, in like I'm if I'm praying with her personally mm. in a like small small mm. group, if I'm pr praying with her, mm. she and I. So what? Uh, mm what kind of declaration like if i'll speak over her that yeah you can see you can even declare when one is hearing it got it so let's let's imagine you know someone's not well we declare over them you are healed by the stripes of jesus right now they're not healed but it's a declaration of our faith in god's word so in that way so when you pray with the spouse it's a prayer of agreement but there can also be prayers of declaration individually where you declare over your spouse or both of you declare together over your home. We'll come to that. There are some scriptures which can be declared over the home, over the family. So both can declare together. Got it? Yeah. Right. So um, a good thing to do is to search the bible and find a lot of scriptures okay we just shared a few there are some additional ones in the um, uh, notes but we can always go and make our own list of scriptures meditate on those scriptures and as we meditate you know faith is built up in us and then we start to make it our declaration um, there is uh, in our uh, apc app there is a section called as toolkit it has declarations from a to z so from a you know like uh, um, authority there is declaration like i am seated with christ in the heavenly places they're all personalized so scriptures scriptures are there but what i'm doing is i am speaking my faith in what that scripture is saying so that's also a practice which you could uh, learn so just go there and every, every day also, just go through it. Slowly read through the declarations and uh, speak it out. Declare, this is what I believe. You know, I have the authority. 
uh, and uh, so you know different things like that different words like that we can go ahead and declare now let's move on so i think we've understood about declaration over the spouse and a few points we can pray for their spiritual growth for them to fulfill god's purpose make declarations uh, based on verses in the bible uh, also when the holy spirit gives us a rema word rema word is inspired word prophetic word we can declare it over them and say god you have spoken and you said that you are going to raise them up you are going to open doors for them you know you will fight their battles whatever that rema word is you just speak it over their lives and declaration may also feel like warfare now sometimes in reality that doesn't exist but when god gives us a promise we keep declaring till we actually see it manifest so operate in declarations and of course pray for their wisdom success blessing uh, blessing in ho at home in work in ministry in every area of their life now when it comes to praying for children similar pattern will apply so pray for their spiritual growth uh, pray for them to fulfill god's purpose for their lives declare god's word over them so there are some scriptures let me go on to those scriptures and read it out for us okay yeah so let me quickly read the scriptures it's given in the gnb version in our notes i'm on page 59 psalm 37 verse 25 where it says um i'm now old i'm old now i have lived a long time but i have never seen good people abandoned by the lord or their children begging for food okay so that's a declaration that we can make and we can say that uh, god uh, you never abandon me you never abandon my family and my children will never beg for food it's a declaration of god's provision based on god's promise okay so shall we go through the declarations or you want to read it later on you know we'll just go through the declarations okay now psalm 112 and uh, verses 1 to 3 praise the lord happy is the person who honors the lord who takes pleasure in obeying his commands the good man's children will be powerful in the land his descendants will be blessed his family will be wealthy and rich and he will be prosperous forever <coughs> so i'm sure we can pray this for ourselves also right so we prayed for ourselves and for the children what does it say for the children children will be powerful in the land descendants will be blessed so when we pray over the children this is what we say god thank you that my children they are mighty in the land they are mighty you raise them up to do great things for your glory that's my declaration my children are blessed you know maybe they are very naughty disobedient all that is happening but still you say my children are blessed because declaration comes from a place of faith so as we are declaring maybe for some time they go away from god and they are mischievous and you know they mess up everything but remember the influence the spiritual influence of believing parents is very powerful so we pray over the children and as we pray over the children you know god brings them back you know i can think of many testimonies of uh, my own friends i've seen their lives i've seen you know some of them um like their parents prayed for them and they went away from god and how god brought them back beautifully i've seen some families where parents were praying for their children in very difficult times you know kids are just on their own trip but uh in amazing ways god has brought them back and god has encountered them many of them are serving god today 
so it's very it's very real it's very real but what was the common uh, feature you know in, in all of these testimonies praying parents declaring parents parents didn't give up you know it's heartbreaking to see when kids are you know so far away but they never gave up they kept praying they kept praying they kept declaring my children are blessed you know my children will fulfill god's purpose and god brought them back so that's how we just hold on to each one of these words and we speak it over them maybe it, it looks like you know the uh, the children are uh, very lazy they're not pursuing god's purposes right now but we still say you know as this particular scripture says psalm 112 verse 2 that my children will be powerful in the land they will be mighty in the land surely god will change them he'll make them influential in the land one day okay so keep praying keep praying no matter what the circumstance looks like okay few more quickly let's uh, look okay let's look at isaiah 8 verse 18 i'll just read the portion that we can declare it says uh, you know the children whom the lord has given me we are for signs and wonders in israel we are for signs and wonders so we can declare that the children whom god has given they are for signs and wonders god they will proclaim you know your supernatural works so as parents make that declaration sometimes what parents tend to do is all the wrong declarations come out of the mouth you are useless you're hopeless okay <laughs> you will not do anything good in your life and look at your friend no 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 we won't make those declarations okay there's a way of saying those things also but unfortunately even that is powerful because life and death is in the power of the tongue but we have to choose no matter how you know i don't want to use those words again but you find that your kid is be be behaving so irresponsible but still you say you are blessed <laughs> okay you will be mighty on the earth you are for signs and wonders right and of course correct them in the right way and help them make progress so there are so many other scriptures here isaiah 54 verse 13 my children will be taught by the lord and great will be their peace my children will be taught by the lord great will be their peace so what does this mean see when kids grow up uh, even when we grew up, there's a lot of external influence, media, friends, school. But we say, Lord, everything can influence them, but you are the greatest influence in their lives. My children will be taught by the Lord. So yes, everything can come, but you are speaking to them, guiding them, helping them, protecting them. My children will be taught of the Lord, God's guidance. God's direction, God's leading will be their portion and great will be their peace. So when God guides, they'll choose the right things. And when they choose the right things, what happens? There's peace in the path of the Lord. So they will have peace. They will not be, you know, um, uh, destroyed, damaged uh, by, by damaging their soul and going through anxiety and pain and all of that so make it a declaration and say god you will teach my children and great will be their peace okay so in this way we can pick up declarations and speak it over the children now moving on after prayer for children there's a section here in our notes which is praying for salvation and deliverance from waywardness okay waywardness simply means when kids go away from god so uh, what we'll do is i think we'll come back and then we'll get into this section so that we can discuss more uh, but any questions so far about praying for family yes <laughs> yeah yes I'm so glad in, you didn't use the mic. Okay, <laughs> no, no. So yeah, for those of us who are not married, right? You can declare for your future spouse. 
is i don't know about all that <laughs> i'm saying declare it for your future spouse <laughs> yeah in prayer in prayer right so it's not a funny question. Every time I teach the class, there is one question. I was actually surprised that nobody is asking. <laughs> okay, so if you're not married, don't worry. You can pray this into your future. It's as simple as that. Pray for your future wife, future husband, future kids. You can declare now. You come for counseling. I think that's all I can say right now. Okay. Yeah. For for your protection, I can't answer your question. Live. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, um, uh, Justin, do you have a question? Yeah. Please unmute and ask, Justin. Okay, we have a question, everyone. Please listen. Uh, we're not able to hear you very well. Okay, Justin, are you speaking? Yes. Yeah, now we can hear you. Go ahead. How can I be clear for my Uh, okay, Justin, I'm not too sure if the audio is okay at your end. Would you please be able to type out your question? Okay, um, I think, yeah, there seems to be an audio issue. So what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, come back during the next session. We'll just see if we can have the audio fixed. All right. Uh, so thank you, everyone. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 